All right, guys, so I did not want to make this video. I don't want to make this video. I wish I didn't have to make this video, but I committed to bringing you guys some information. And this is just my honest, candid reaction. Post loss, the Bears lost to the Buccaneers, and a lot of ugly things went on. So on the bright side, yes, Justin Fields threw for 211 yards and a touchdown on the downside he threw two interceptions to end the game and i don't know if he was looking scared if he's just not seeing things if he's not trusting himself whatever the case may be fields sat there holding the ball all day long took sacks completely unnecessary was missing guys who were wide open now i'm not the type to just sit and blame one person i think there's plenty of blame to go around but at the same time, you, you, you don't you can't really like what you see from Justin Fields, especially in today's game. So putting accountability on offensive coordinator Luke Getze, why did the Bears just abandon the quarterback run? Justin Fields broke quarterback records running the ball last season. Bears were stagnant to start the season. They changed the game plan, opened up the running game for Justin Fields, and the offense immediately exploded for 30 points per game for a month stretch. Justin Fields got an MVP vote because of this. He finished ninth. It was a fifth place vote, but nonetheless, he put the team on his back and was making it happen with multiple 50 plus yard runs, four huge, long, really long touchdown runs. Why did we just completely abandon the quarterback run? I don't understand why Luke Getze especially is trying to force Justin Fields to be a strict pocket passer. Why are we taking away the best element of Justin Fields' game? Part of that blame does go on Justin Fields as well. He says he wants to be known as a passing quarterback. He wants to run the ball less. The whole organization wants to make him something that he is not. I mean, yes, he can develop into a pocket passing quarterback over time, but his career is not going to last that long if you take away the things he's good at, trying to force him to get better at other things. I just, I cannot wrap my head around the reasoning why you would take away the quarterback runs and why you would encourage Fields not to scramble on plays, to stay in the pocket when he's dynamic when he gets on the run, why the pocket isn't even moving they're not doing any bootlegs now obviously a naked bootleg where he's going the opposite way that's where he gets sacked a lot but as but a regular bootleg where the offensive line follows him and he gets on the move there was no instance where justin fields ran outside of the pocket and kept his eyes downfield he just stayed in the pocket for like 10 seconds and took a sack i as a bears fan i'm frustrated I know other Bears fans are frustrated. I mean, on the defensive side of the ball, all the way up until the final pick six at the end of the game, the Bears defense held the Buccaneers to 20 points. And that's without Eddie Jackson, who was injured. That's with Jaquan Brisker, who missed time, who had some sort of illness. I think it was due to the heat. That's without Kyler Gordon. That's with a, a whole banged up unit and a rookie cornerback. They still held the Buccaneers to 20 points. So... The defense definitely gave the offense plenty of opportunities to win that game. The offense had the ball with two minutes left, down three points, and then everything just fell apart. Luke Getzey called the screen. It got called back because Claypool was blocking too early, and then Getzey calls a screen immediately again. I don't understand why Getzey just reverts to so many screens when they clearly I mean, they're flawed. Yes, they work every now and then, but the defense sniffed it out from the beginning and Fields made a bad decision, threw the ball, and they intercepted the screen and he ended up scoring. Just overall, just bad, bad, bad football from top to bottom. <sighs> it's frustrating. I, again, I hate making this video. It just sounds like I'm ranting, but like, I mean, that's what happened. When you look at what happened throughout the game, Fields had time to throw the ball. Yeah, there were some times where the offensive line didn't look good. Braxton Jones got a flag and then immediately let up a sack. That wasn't on Fields. But overall, most of the game, the offensive line gave Fields time. There was guys wide open and he just wasn't hitting them. So, I mean, he had he threw for 211 yards, like I mentioned, and he threw that really good strike uh, for a touchdown to Chase Claypool. So there's still talent in him. 
I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm done with Justin Fields and the Bears should move on, but if it continues at this trajectory where he's just completely missing guys open and standing back there all day long and taking sacks, then that's a tough conversation and you got to wonder if Ryan Poles will be looking for a new quarterback in the offseason. But it's week two. Last year, Justin Fields looked pretty bad during week two and week three. And then the team changed their game plan and got him on the move. And like I said, the offense exploded. So I think it's time to stop trying to force Justin Fields to be some pure pocket passer who never uses his legs and get back to what made Justin Fields great in his first two seasons in the NFL. So that's all I really had to say about this video. I think Chase Claypool had kind of a bounce back game. He had some mistakes, but he had that touchdown, had three catches. He was blocking with a lot more effort. DJ Moore had, I think, six catches for 104 yards. Roshan Johnson was looking pretty good. Khalil Herbert got good on some flashes, but Tampa Bay Buccaneers defensive line, they're just, they're really good at stopping the run. So the Bears just really passed all game long. Cole Komet looked decent at the few I the few plays I noticed of him. Again, this is just a quick reaction. I haven't gone back and watched film or anything, so I can't tell you the exact ins and outs of who was at fault each play or who was supposed to do what, you know what I mean? Like, this is just an instant reaction and among the Chicago Bears fan base, the talk of town is going to be, is Justin Fields the guy and are the Chicago Bears, especially offensive coordinator Luke Getze, failing to help develop Justin Fields? So all valid questions, and they're going to be continue to be questions until this offense figures out how to turn this thing around. Now, moving on to next week, we play the Kansas City Chiefs. So that is a quarterback who will not forgive mistakes. Patrick Mahomes will take advantage of every slither of mistake the Bears make. So if the Bears want to start this year with a win in the first three weeks, if they don't want to start out 0-3, then I really suggest they do some deep digging, some looking in the mirror, and figure out what they have to do differently to turn this thing around. Because whatever they're doing right now just isn't working. So if you made it all the way to this point of the video, go ahead and drop a comment. Let me know how you guys felt about that game. Who are you blaming for that game? What are you not happy about? Use my comments as a venting space. Don't, I ask you guys not to get disrespectful and start calling players crazy names and calling people, um, you know, cussing and all this stuff. Just just vent how you felt about the, uh, about the Bears game today. And remember, this is just a sport. These are human beings, okay? They're not putting your lives at risk. Lots of people saying nasty things. It doesn't have to be nasty. Just drop a comment. Let me know how you felt about today's game. I'll try to read all of your comments. Stay tuned for my next video and I'll see y'all there.